Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about conceptual closure and what that means. We're going to talk about what conceptual closure is in terms of branding and advertising and how it works throughout the brain. And it's going to be related to a recent study that was published in Frontiers in Neuroscience, the special issue that I'm co-editing. Um, and let's see how that works. So with conceptual closure, the first thing we need to, to look at is a definition of what conceptual closure is. And as you can see, we, you know, one way to define conceptual closure is that it's a dramatic and abrupt shift in visual and or auditory narrative that leads to changes in attention, emotions and memory. So let's break that down a little bit. On the one side, it means that there needs to be in a narrative. So imagine that you're watching a, a video or you're watching a movie or you're listening to an audiobook or something like that. When there is an abrupt shift, it, it's a change in tone. It's a change in the visual display. It's, a, it's an abrupt change in itself. That's the first thing. And the second is that that change can lead to changes in attention, emotions, uh, memory, for example. So that's what we can think about as conceptual closure. It's a closure of an episode, if you like, and it's switched to another to another episode. Okay. Several studies have looked into related items when it comes to conceptual closure, and some of them, uh, you know, are listed here. So first of all, we see that our experiences is segmented and encoded into long-term memory as a set of discrete events. And this means that basically when we look at the way that we are remembering things, it's not kind of as a continuous stream, but it's more like a set of events. And, you know, as an episode is an episode with a beginning and an end. It is almost like a, an encapsulation, so to speak, of one event. We don't remember the whole stream. We, we remember certain chunks of that stream. Okay. The second is that the event segmentation plays a role in long-term memory uh, encoding, especially around event boundary. So this also means that we tend to remember things that when they begin and when they end, this is also called the primacy and recency effect. Um, but this also means that, you know, when we are remembering things, uh, let's say the episode was for a couple of minutes or a couple of hours or something like that. Still, we, we don't remember everything equally throughout that, that, uh, that episode. We tend to remember things in the beginning, at the end, you know, basically at the boundaries better than the other things. The third thing is that event boundaries are then associated with an updating of working memory. Now, this is a critical point because it means that at the time that we see a switch in a narrative, it's almost like the narrative or the sorry, the, the working memory is resetting. It's kind of rebooting, if you like, in the fraction of a second. You know, it's almost like uh, working memory is cleansing itself and then restarting to focus on the next chapter, so to speak. And finally, uh, event segmentation engages the brain's memory system, so that means that it's hippocampus and dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. And there's it's maybe no surprise when we see that it's so related to the way that we remember things, is that it's the memory system that is actually engaged. So both the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and the hippocampus in the middle, um, you know, towards the middle of the brain. One thing that we can see that conceptual closure is related to is what we call change blindness. And if you have a look at the screen here, you can see that there's a flickering uh, image back and forth. Uh, what well, is actually back and forth, you can see it. It's, for you, it's just a picture that is blinking, so to speak. What actually happens is that there's a flickering back and forth between two different versions of the same picture. And this is one crit critical element that is different between the two pictures. And I'll give you a couple of seconds just to see if you can spot the difference here. It's a big part of the screen that actually changes. And if you have a look uh, towards the airplane engine, you, you can now see that as it's uh, blinking, it actually switches back and forth. So that's one thing to say about, uh, you know, one demonstration of change blindness. Let's have another one. There's a blinking here. It's slightly slower blinking, but it's still a blinking. So if you have a look at the blinking here, what do you see? There's one change that is happening here. Oh, 
It may, might be difficult. It took me some time to see it as well. So it's the pants on the, the guy to the left. So the, the, the trousers or the pants of the guy to the left. It's it's changing color, basically. It's, it's a more subtle change, but it's still there once you see it. You can't unsee it, so to speak. So this whole idea about change blindness is related to the blinking effect, if you like. So when we are blinking or when we experience a switch, an abrupt change, we tend to kind of have a resetting, both of our working memory and our perception, our attention and so forth. And it actually means that we can miss some things. So in terms of uh, advertising, branding, communication and so forth, you can already see that we're, you know, we're closing in on some, something that's going to be highly related and you know, relevant to that. In this study, uh, we're going to talk about a, a paper uh, that was published by uh, Richard Silberstein uh, and his colleagues. And uh, this is related to conceptual closer, closure and then related to EG measurements and then also advertising effects, uh, at least as a case study. So um, we're going to go a little bit into what they did in the study. And then we're going to look more into how you can use, use that information using some of the solutions that we provide here at Neurons. The first thing that the, or even the main thing that the researchers did was to, you know, basically establish whether we, it was possible to measure conceptual closure in the brain using EEG. Now, I won't go too much into detail about how uh, Silberstein is using his EEG. It's called the steady state topography, it's a SST. That's a, a very specific way of using the EEG that he has an expertise in. And he's um, basically co-developed that or even developed that method. So, uh, but, you know, suffice to say that that's a way to measure how the brain responds in certain cases. So it's, it's a great way to, you know, track how brain responses happens throughout the brain. Um, it's comparable to what we do at neurons so we are looking at what's called the frequency band analysis which basically look at how the brain responds in different frequency bands um, but you know i won't go too much into detail about the differences because that's going to be highly technical in the study though what they focused on was to see is there an effect of you know a, an event boundary and in this case they made the event event boundary around you know going through a doorway and walking through a doorway is what we know an event boundary and we see that the brain is basically resetting once we walk through a, a doorway and very often we know this ourselves is that we walk through a doorway we go into our living rooms and all of a sudden we're doing something where we couldn't really remember what we were you know just about to do and we have to go back and kind of backtrack a little bit before we remember again and it's simply because that once we walk through that doorway we tend to reset our brain tends to reset a little bit and the question is can you measure that in the brain and in this study they tested uh, participants while they were watching different pieces of art, which is interesting in itself. What they also did was then to test is exactly what happened in the brain when they saw that people were, you know, walking through a, a doorway. And in this case, it was an on-screen test. It was not a live test per se. It was not a mobile test. This was, you know, highly uh, construed, so to speak. So, you know, one of, the, one of the limitations of the study is, of course, that people didn't walk through the doorway themselves. But what they found was that exactly at the time that people went through that doorway, you know, even if it was virtu virtually, it was as if they can track that there was a drop in the working memory load. There was an event, um, uh, it was basically a response uh, around the time that people went through the doorway that was related to conceptual closure. So in this respect, what they found was that especially the kind of frontal, uh, the frontal uh, system was responsible or, you know, uh, tracking those changes the most. And you can see that in the figure here as, as vertical lines in the graph here around uh, 35 seconds. You can't see the seconds here, but you can see across all of these channels, there's a drop in the signal at this point. So this is a deflection that is, uh, you know, aggregate, aggregated across a lot of different participants. And it means that this seems to be a robust phenomenon that they found that, uh, you know, when people are experiencing this conceptual closure, you see this brain response. So it's, a, it's almost like a conceptual closure metric, if you like. What the authors then did was to do what they call a case study. In this case, they tested an ad uh, for a client that they were uh, able to and allowed to share uh, how you know the performance to that ad was. And then based on the responses there, and I'll get back to how those responses looked, um, the, the company, so Neuro Insight, they provided a suggestion for how should you, you know, interpret these results and how can that ad be, uh, be improved. And what they found 
uh, was that they could change some certain time, uh, certain things at the end. And you can see that there are certain things that, you know, such as, you know, the, the boy was uh, in the original version, he was kind of dragging his grandfather uh, away from the display, while in the original or in the new version, uh, they stayed looking at it. So you can imagine this as a way to not switch uh, the original had a kind of a switching conceptual uh, version here, so there was a conceptual closure in that the boy wanted to walk away from it, while at the uh, in the second on the, the new version uh, they stayed, so they stayed in the concept, so to speak. And what they found was a dramatic change in how people perceived that kind of uh, response or uh, that type of of narrative, and they saw that the conceptual closure was much stronger in. Um, in, in the first version, the original version. And they also saw that that had a detrimental effect on the brand recognition and brand memory. While in the newer version that they recommended, they saw that the conceptual closure effect was not there at all. It's actually a different a kind of op opposite effect, if you like. And what they found, uh, and you can see that in the, the dotted versus the, the whole line here on, on the graph, um, what they then found was that, uh, you know, this was also related to a much better uh, brand recognition and brand memory uh, in a you know, subsequent sample. And one of the things that we have discovered as well is that beyond uh, the ED responses that we can, you know, use to track these types of responses is that it's also possible to do this just by doing automatic visual analysis of, of ads. And this is something I recently blogged about at uh, the Neurovision.io blog. So at the Neurovision blog, I wrote about how you can use the Neurovision tool for analyzing your videos, but I'm going to show you exactly how that works here as well to you know, identify conceptual closures or the lack thereof, because you really have an ad that can, you know, perform bad uh, if you have two strong conceptual closures at, you know, event boundaries. So let's see how that works. The ad I'm going to show you here is about 10 years old. It's an Evian ad, uh, Evian, the, the, the water brand. And uh, this is an ad that went totally viral and people loved the, the ad. But the problem was that people didn't really remember what it was for. And they very often had a hard time remembering even the category of, of uh, you know, product that this was for. We then run the analysis through Neurovision and Neurovision provides not only kind of a heat map, but it also provides, you know, two other scores, actually more scores than that. But let's focus on two scores and especially one, but we have the clarity score, which is all about, you know, how many you know, hotspots are there uh, around the, you know, that are grabbing attention, so to speak. And the second, which is most important here is the cognitive demand score and cognitive demand is all related to, you know, how much information there's in the picture or the frame. So this, this is a very nice way to track how, you know, there's a change in the visual complexity as an index of conceptual closure. Because as, you, as I mentioned before, when you walk from one uh, room to another, there's a change in the visual composition typically because you, you walk to a one light, light setting to another. You can imagine when you're doing, uh, you know, advertising or even films, there's a rapid or, you know, there's a switch between, you know, scenes and that scene can be more in the same or less in the same type of visual display. So let's look at how that works for this ad. And as you can see in the ad, uh, especially I've highlighted two of the three different places here that there was, you know, dedicated screens for advertising, um, uh, for, for kind of the branding. And what you can see in the beginning and at the end, I want you to look at the red score because that's the cognitive demand score. And the cognitive demand score here shows that there's a, you know, a dramatic jump up in the complexity level or the cognitive demand level at the time that this display, this screen is shown. At the second time, you can even see in the middle, there's a dramatic switch, switch here as well. I don't think that it says Evian at that point, so I didn't want to include too much, but there's a drop again, because you go to a blank screen basically, almost. And then at the end, there's a drop, first of all, to the, the baby that just stands looking, but then there's also a dramatic uh, jump down at the end of whether it basically says Evian. And this is what we can call a conceptual closure effect. Uh, if you measure this with EEG, you would also see that, you know, conceptual closure response. And this might actually explain why there is such a poor memory for this, this brand uh, in this ad, because the ad is, it was at that point uh, in time, at least, was extremely popular, but they did not succeed fully in converting that into brand memory. So let's have a look at a different ad that was also coming out at the very much uh, the same time. 
this is a an ad for Old Spice, and uh, we'll show you the the Neurovision analysis result right away. So, as you can see in this um, this uh, analysis, you can see that. Uh, the cognitive demand response is actually flattened out. There's no really big uh, leaps. Uh, you, know, you can see it in the beginning and the end, but that's more like an artifact from the analysis because it's uh, it's going from black to uh, to the movie and then back to, to dark or black again. So that means that that is a conceptual closer, but it's not a product in the ad in itself. And so you'll see when there is a product uh, attention here, its product attention is very high, and we also see that even at the time that it says Old Spice, the um, there is no conceptual closure. There's no abrupt changes in the cognitive demand, and no, that means that there's no big changes in the scene. Now, here we see typically that uh, brand attention is much better for this, uh, and th this is definitely one of the things that you can use neurovision analysis for, is to analyze whether there are any abrupt changes in the cognitive demand. And if you put your brand around that, there, there is a high chance that people will remember the ad, but they will actually remember or forget the, the brand in itself. And one of the ways that you can do this is to go to neurovision.io. And on that website, you can sign up for, you know, getting some free credits for your first registration. And then beyond that, the, the fee for this is, you know, it's a subscription model. So it's actually pretty low. And it means that you can analyze a lot of images and videos for a few uh, bucks per, per month. Uh, and this allows you to do the, you know, conceptual closure uh, analysis as we've just done here today. It doesn't really require all the time that you do in your science and EG analysis. Uh, but for this purpose, at least, you can use Neurovision as well. So that's conceptual closure and uh, I look forward to see you next time.